Okay, we're back again, and today we were going. We are going to be oiling the needle bearings that were stuck, um, and we're going to be replacing the uh, rear bearings on the hub here because these don't even move. So um, this is going to be real, real. Uh, hopefully easy video just to beat these out and what you're going to watch me do is I'm not going to use a press on these um, on the back side of the bearing housing when we get into this there's three notches inside the aluminum housing and those notches are there so you can beat the bearing out the other side so it's going to be a real simple video but I'll tell you uh, I'll tell you a little more when we get into this okay before we install our new bearings oh it's about 100 degrees out again today, which is not good. I had tore this top part of the bearing out. Now this is a sealed bearing. And the one thing of why these bearings wear out, a lot of it has to do with the grease that's inside the bearing. Um, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that, that up there we go, that other side out. I have no idea what kind of grease this is. These bearings were purchased, I think for about $20. Um, and this does not look like very high quality grease. So what I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna pack this with my own the dependable Amsoil grease before we go any farther. And the reason I'm doing this is this way I know that these things are not going to seize up because I could tell you right now, I don't believe that there's enough grease in this. Will this turn smoothly? Yeah, it sure will. Will it uh, last very long? I don't know. I don't believe that there's enough grease in this. Um, so we'll just pack high quality Amsoil grease in here. And almost all this Amsoil grease is compatible with other grease. So layering, layering it over the other grease shouldn't be that big of a deal. And I'm just going to press the housing back and turn it. And if I get some excess grease on it, really not going to hurt it may actually help it slip into the the carrier better and it feels like it's moving better already and this thing's brand new so same thing we're going to do the other side here as well I really should probably use gloves but I went to go buy gloves. I usually buy my gloves at Harbor Freight. Um, even because I work for the janitorial company, the uh, paper towel supplier is having problems still getting cases of gloves. Now when I talk about cases of gloves, I'm talking about mass produced industrial size um, amounts of gloves that you purchase. So. And what we'll do is we will just press our bearing back together <laughs> and it feels smoother already anyone that knows what they're doing knows what I just did is just preventative maintenance even on this new stuff so I'll go ahead and clean this up and then we'll start on removing the old uh, bearing system And actually, I've got the other one apart, so we'll just go ahead and do it as well. And this grease is actually water resistant, corrosion resistant, and I actually trust it. That's the biggest thing. side and 
the other the first bearing we did actually it had barely any grease in it okay now the other one will be good to go okay now there is a very large snap ring here and if you don't have any snap ring uh, pliers this is a really reasonable set I'll put the link below I bought it on Amazon this thing was under 30 bucks even if you are not a mechanic and just do repairs on your own just having the right tool even if they're cheap tools um, for $30 if it just gets you through one job is you know worth the money so check the links below if you don't have one of these kits um, any purchase from that link below will really help me out um, and it may keep you out of a pinch in one job that you might do so this is an extremely large sir clip here so you're going to need a larger uh, snap ring tool and we're just going to pull it out like so actually one side is turning on this one but the back side is not this thing got ridden hard and got put away wet and it just seized everything on every bearing every needle bearing every joint on the quad so what we're going to do now is we're going to flip it over I'm going to get a couple pieces of wood I think I will actually I got some wood right here and hopefully I won't have to I might have to use the vise I was hoping I didn't have to use the vise but I think I'm gonna have to use the vise because I don't think this is gonna stand still we'll find out I'm not real sure if this is gonna stay on the workbench and what we have is our three notches here and we're just going to take our punch and we're going to punch this bearing out. I've got a couple different sizes here. I was going to use the larger one, but it actually looks like the smaller one might uh, be better. And this may not work, so we'll just see if it is going to move it. And it is not moving it. I'm going to have to really hammer on this. I'm just making sure that the one I bought is the same size. And this thing, you can't see it probably, but it is so full of crud that I might have to spray this. I mean, I put this thing in an ultrasonic parts cleaner with pretty heavy duty uh, heat to move it. Other than that, we might have to try to move it through the center, but I don't believe that that's going to work. I do not believe beating on it in the middle. I mean, if we destroy it, we destroy it, I guess. So if we can get it, if we can get it to move just a little bit. By using a bearing install tool set here. I just hate to because this is a two-piece bearing when we reinstall this we need to be a little more careful here And we will probably use a vise on the uh, next one. It is moving. 
but it's going to scratch up. God dang, it's going to scratch up all the paint work I've done, but that's okay. As you can see, we're not brushing here. This is going to completely destroy the inside of that bearing. And I've almost got it out. it is removed actually if you look I imagine that this is a you know when they made this they the casting of this they would have made a flat point here and that's right where I put the wood block so it would be easier to get out so and there <laughs> it actually freed up doing all that beat and freed that one side up but this thing is uh, definitely wore out and somebody had actually put I would say NICs on the inside when they installed it. If I get one of these out of there to open it up. So anyway if you need one of these bearing kits I will also put uh, the link below. These are good to have just to have around. As you've seen I've used these quite a bit. They're starting to get pretty mangled because they're made of aluminum. Um, if you use them in a press and you actually know what you're doing, they'll last a really long time. Uh, the one from Harbor Freight is pretty good quality if you have a car, but I really don't work on cars. I actually pay people to work on cars. So anyway, we're just going to throw this one in the trash. Okay, now we're going to install the new bearing here and if you've never done this it can be a little difficult the idea is to get it in as straight as possible first you want to try to get it in straight and you don't want it to cattywampus and actually what we're gonna do is I did dig the old bearing out of the trash I told you to throw away. And don't throw that away because I believe the easiest way possible here is to use the old bearing to beat the housing in. The reason we're not going to use our aluminum housing here is because this is a two-piece internal bearing and beating to install this into the housing might actually damage it of the housing with the uh, sealed bearing so we're going to beat on it but what's going to make contact with the new bearing is this flat side here of the outside edge so we're just going to lay it on there like so and because this is the old bearing we're just going to drive the new bearing into the housing and we're going to be hitting this pretty hard and we're going to go in a circular motion and it's going to press the bearing down in there. If you're experienced and have a shop press, maybe you want to do the shop press technique, but if you follow these directions and you don't have a lot of tools, this is more ideal for doing it this way. I just don't know, I, I just would like to do this without putting it in the vise. 
and you can see the bearing is already starting to move so what I'm doing is I'm taking my hand and I'm holding it against the top of the new bearing because you don't want the bearing to come up just a little bit from a hammer and then when you hammer it again for there to be space here for it to make contact and strike like so you want it to try to stay on the bearing so when you hit it with the hammer all the force from the hammer is going down into the new bearing you don't want it to to jump up and then smack it again From the impact we actually just dropped the bottom piece out which is I think we will be fine it just come out from vibration you can actually see that this old bearing it was full of water and the water from being beat on is transferring onto the top of the bearing. There is no moisture whatsoever. It's all coming out of this bearing. What I'm checking is that I didn't damage the bearing, which I didn't. Um, there's just excess um, grease on the outside of the bearing that I'm starting to see since it got the moisture out of it. might beat it like this. See if this might. We're almost done. We'll just see if this might put it in a little smoother.
almost done. Crap. I'm starting to get sweat in my eye too. I just gotta go a little bit more. Then we can get that circlet put back in. We're going to give it two more hits here. Then we're going to reinstall our back piece. Okay. A little bit of time, a little bit of effort. You can beat it in by hand. If you don't have these tools, you can makeshift some other tools, but this, this method and this technique will get you through um, and get you going back on the road here. What we need to do now is reinstall our sur clip. Like so. Oh, we lost our bearing housing again. Okay. So now that we have our new bearing inside the carrier, we're just going to come back and don't forget those needle bearings that were so stuck from moisture and whatnot that we freed up we're actually going to put grease on the inside here to grease these needle bearings so that don't happen again this was the one that was really stuck on this one you could just see it And once I put the grease inside there, I'm just going to turn and get the grease on the bearings. And try to get the grease worked into the housing of the bearings. And if you watch my, well, I don't know if it'll be my next video. I actually, when I re when I remove the rear bottom A arm on the back side, both of the A arms, the needles actually fell out of the the needle bearing, and I have never personally had that happen. So I went ahead and I I rebuilt one of them. So. If that happens to you, I probably am going to have the only video on the internet for how to fix that. So that is a must watch. And if you are a subscriber to the channel, don't forget to hit the button below and hit the bell so you get notified. But everything will be in the playlist. And I'm just going back again and working this grease. Man, you guys, I haven't showed you yet. I have got one of the biggest, baddest 130 pound Rottweilers for a neighbor of a dog now. And he gets his head, it's stuck in motorcycle tires and runs around the yard with this tire on his head. It is the funniest shit you've ever seen. And after he's done messing with the tire, um, he comes back and then he mounts the tire like he conquered the tire. It is just freaking hilarious. So, um, now you know about the dog situation. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and put this bearing back in the housing. 
and we're just going to apply grease to it because I did shave a lot of the coating off of these and then I'm just going to insert the bearing back into the housing and this is going to make a mess but we'll clean this all up when it's done and the reason we're going to go ahead and do all this is because we're going to go ahead and run the bolt back in because I have so much more work to do like so wow what a mess Okay, now with your shafts inside, we're going to put our rubber pieces back on to try and seal the unit back up. And put our two pieces back on here. And then we have our bolts. And your bolt's going to be a little bit longer, but it's going to keep that that bearing in the shaft here and we're just going to reinstall our bolts back to keep everything together because I'm going to have to put this back in storage here so there's one bolt What a mess. You put this thing together dry, you'll be working on this again in a matter of no time. So we'll get this all cleaned up and then I'll talk to you. Okay, and that's pretty much how you uh, do the rear carrier bearings inside the uh, housing. So um, as long as you follow my steps and do what I do, you'll be just fine. The main thing about this, if you have to do this work, is dude, you need to get some high quality grease I'll put the link below through the Amsoil. Uh, you can order through my dealer number 554-1460 and you just need some good high quality grease sitting around in case you're going to do this type of work. This grease will outlast whatever that white grease is that was inside of it and it also will help with corrosion and waterproofing the bearing. So um, yeah that's pretty much it. If you have one of these quads and you know what, had to watch this video check the playlist below there's a lot of other stuff. Next week, we'll go ahead and I've already got the sway bar video, I think, shot almost done. So I've got to get it edited. And then next week, it'll be the uh, sway bar. A lot of people don't know about there's two grease points on the sway bar. I didn't even know that. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys and gals. I'm out of here.